Welcome to episode three of Exploring the Messy Middle, where we use behavioral science to help marketers better understand their consumers and how they make decisions. I'm Dan Monheit, co-founder and strategy director at Hard Hat. With me from Google Australia and New Zealand today, we have head of consumer market research, Rachel Powell. Hey guys. Hey Rach, and head of strategy and insights, Kristen Sutter. Hey there. Rach, Kristen, welcome back. Thank you, good to be here. Awesome. All right. So in the last episode, we talked about a new model of consumer decision making and how consumers end up in what sometimes feels like a never ending loop of exploration and evaluation. We also talked about the seven behavioral principles that tap into the irrational part of every consumer's dino brain and how we can use them to nudge the shopper out of the loop and hopefully into a purchase. Now, was it just me or did you guys also find yourselves being caught up by some of these principles since our last chat? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. All of a sudden I see them everywhere. Um, this last weekend we went car shopping and while we weren't aware of the biases coming into play in the moment, which actually now that I think about it would have been incredibly helpful. My husband and I did start analyzing our behavior after visiting a dealership and realized we totally fell victim to a couple of them. Mm-hmm. One in particular um, was pretty hilarious. We saw my friend at one of the dealerships because she was uh, also looking for a car and told us she was interested in SUVs because she likes to sit up high. She likes to see more of the road. All of a sudden, I became convinced that we needed an SUV. (laughs) We needed to sit up high to see more of the road. And we actually even test drove an SUV, even though we had never (laughs) even considered one or thought about it or talked about it before that moment. Yeah, this stuff is real, guys. Social proof in action. We are not messing around. All right, so tell me, (laughs) what are we exploring in this episode? Science and simulation. So today we're gonna deep dive into the results from our actual research study, which was a huge number of controlled experiments where we started to test and validate the impact the seven behavioral principles have on brand preference. Yeah, and this is really important for us as marketers, remember, because it helps us see that dino brain in action. And remember how we talked about previously that consumers can't be trusted because they'll rationalize their behavior post-purchase, similar to how Rachel did with her seventh pair of black shoes that we talked about. (laughs) So we really needed to isolate in the research those dino brain behaviors to see what's driving those consumer choices. Shots fired, Kristen. Seriously, we spoke about the (laughs) shoes last episode. We agreed they were a (laughs) different shade to the other black pairs, right? We're just going to leave that alone. Okay, okay, fair. Now, Rach, I'm looking at you. I know you could spend the rest of this episode just talking about the research methodology, which would be (laughs) awesome, but unfortunately is not what this show is about. Maybe you you could just just give us the highlights. Talk to us a little about the setup for the research. Yep, very fair. Look, to start with, it was more than a quarter of a million purchase simulations. So that's like 250,000. That is a lot. Did you just do that mental math in your head? I literally just did that right now. Okay, wow, that is (laughs) impressive. (laughs) Um, And then to recap, the research was looking into those seven uh, behavioral biases and principles that we talked about earlier. All right, should we we fly through them? Yeah, absolutely. So the first one is being present. Here, yeah, see, nailed that one. (laughs) Uh, Category heuristics. So they were the rules of thumb. Social norms. Monkey see, monkey do, especially in car dealerships. Absolutely. (laughs) Authority bias. The power of the lab coat. The power of now. Get it while you can. Scarcity bias. Ah, the great toilet paper fiasco of 2020. <laughs> and lastly, the power of free. Ooh, did you say free? Everybody loves free. Yes, and we all know that I love a free brekkie, even if it's one that I don't actually end up eating. <laughs> <laughs> So also before the simulation began, we asked each shopper for their favorite and their second favorite brand in a given category. And remember, we sampled people who were intending to buy that particular product or service. So this was likely very top of mind for them. Then once we knew what their first and second brand preferences were, we showed them side by side and started to test the impact of each of those biases in terms of how shoppers are making decisions. Yeah. And this is actually kind of complex to talk about as a concept. So, Rach, what do you think? Maybe we should talk through one of our examples? Yeah, let's let's start with um, skincare moisturizers. Oh, that would have been my first choice too. <laughs> that's why I picked it, Dan. That's let's why. Do it. That's why we picked it. So, um, here we have two skincare brands. On the left is the consumer's favorite brand, and on the right, their second favorite brand. Okay, so nothing fancy yet. We've just got the two brands side by side. What happened next? So at this stage, we're only comparing the effect of the second favorite brand being present. Everything else, all potential triggers, what the brands are offering are being held exactly the same. And at this point, we say, which one would you choose? And? And look at this outcome. Straight away, one in three shoppers have switched what they've previously said was their favorite brand and have chosen their second favorite brand 
just because it was there. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. Kristen said earlier, you can't trust people because, you know, they, they lie all the time. And this is <laughs> nuts. Like, we, you just told us what your favorite brand was and then we put it next to your second favorite brand and a third of you chose your second favorite brand just because it was there. Uh, yeah. This is kind of crazy. We were incredibly surprised by this too, but it really speaks to the power of brand presence. So this is basically like you show up at a store, you see your first choice brand and your second choice brand both sitting there on the shelf and all things being equal, you still pick that second choice brand a third of the time just because it's there. Or probably more similar to today's world, you're researching for those products online, you do a search and voila, there's your first choice brand, second choice brand on the page and one in three customers go with that second choice. I guess, I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Just because it's my favorite brand doesn't mean I'm going to pick it every single time, but I can't pick my second favorite unless it turns up. <laughs> That's right. And then we start to play with each of the behavioral biases. So for our second choice brand, we start to activate these and give them propositions or communications or some kind of trigger that plays into each of these biases. We activate or supercharge the second choice brand to make it more compelling than our first choice brand. Ah, uh, cool. So you're like charging them up using those principles. Yeah, exactly right. So if we start with the skincare example, we're going to take heuristics and the power of free. So with the power of free, we know that free Tim Tams are good, but we also know that free shipping is better. Yeah, totally. Send me the box for free. I'll buy my own damn Tim Tams. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's right. So we give our second choice brand free shipping. And then for heuristics, we know that for this category, natural ingredients is a compelling rule of thumb. So we call that out for our second choice brand. Right. And then... So now check out these results. Okay, so let me get this straight. So we've got our second choice brand here. We activate the power of free and heuristics and boom, we are now up to 50% preference share. And all we've done is turn up and turn on two of these things. I know you've got a bunch more you're sitting on. <laughs> How high can we go, guys? That's exactly what we wanted. So now we essentially supercharge that second choice brand. We pull out all the stops and we activate against all of those behavioral biases and see what impact that has in terms of how our shopper is making a decision. All right, this sounds epic. Was this epic? Yeah, it absolutely is. Hold on to your hats, guys, or in my case, my lab coat. <laughs> yeah, so the first thing we did was we layered on that authority bias, and we did that by adding a very official looking 2019 Cosmopolitan Beauty Award winner sticker, which you can Ooh, see here. Ooh, nice sticker. Mm -hmm. And then we activated the power of now by offering uh, next day delivery for our second choice brand. Good. And then we boosted our second choice brand even further with a higher social proof score, a five-star rating versus the three stars. Nice, but I'm not going to lie. You guys have me at the sticker. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then lastly, we laid on the effect of scarcity bias. So telling our shopper there were only two in stock remaining. Now, Dan, any guesses on what percentage of customers then switched across to their second choice brand? Honestly, I have no idea, but I also know that I've never wanted a moisturizer more in my life than I do right now. <laughs> where, where, did, where did we land? It was 81%. It was not 81%. <laughs> yes. It, absolutely. <laughs> so, so, so. She does not tell a lie. <laughs> Data Rachel is, is lie. correct. <laughs> yes. Um, wow. So to quantify that a, li a little bit for you, we saw 81% of shoppers now preferencing that second choice brand simply as a result of leveraging those seven behavioral principles and biases. Wow. So I, I, hope, I hope everybody listening realizes what we're doing here because this is effectively modern day marketing magic right because what i love about this is that activating many of these heuristics in the wild so just calling out the ingredients on a product or promoting the reviews you've already got or highlighting the fact that you're doing free shipping basically costs nothing and has a huge impact on the likelihood of somebody choosing your product or brand this is wild yeah it's unbelievable to be honest um but promise you it's true it's an, an incredibly strong effect so especially if you think about the category of skincare and moisturizers it's a very personal product it's something you're putting on your skin on your face something you typically would feel super connected to but you may be thinking that a switch from a first choice brand to a second choice brand isn't really that big of a deal because after all it is your second choice brand so um, that's when we decided to try something a little bit more drastic Ooh, i'm intrigued what did you guys do <laughs> <laughs> so next we introduced a completely fictitious brand. Ah, Google face cream, finally. I want it already. Where can I buy this? <laughs> <laughs> so not not quite Google face cream. Um, it's actually a completely made up skincare brand called Maker. Um, the one thing to note is that it has no established brand equity in the market because it is not real. 
Yeah, makes um, sense. And it, it complete sense. And it, it has very little brand identity either. In fact, none outside of what you can see here, which is simply the logo. Yeah, but that was apparently enough to win over Dan. Hey, God, so. that is, it's a good logo. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we supercharged it. So we took all of our different behavioral biases and we turned them on and we activated them just the way we did for our second choice brand. And rather shockingly, almost half of our shoppers abandoned their favorite brand in favor of a completely made up one based purely on leveraging these behavioral principles. Are we, are we really that fickle about something as serious as face cream? This is astounding. <laughs> So this is probably a little scary if you're a brand leader in the category, but could be really promising if you're a market challenger. But remember, this does not mean that branding and brand preference don't play a part, a really important part, actually, because you saw over half of consumers would not go to the made up brand from their first choice brand. So that itself demonstrates that true power and strength of branding. All right. Makes sense, guys. And I totally get it for product, but I also know that you did a bunch of categories. And so I'm wondering, can you can you give me something else from the other end of the spectrum to talk through and let's see how things played out there? Um, sure, what do you think about health insurance? Uh, I think health insurance is great. I would love to hear about health insurance. Let's dive in. Okay, so we'll skip ahead a little bit here. Um, exactly like skincare, we saw a third of customers defaulted to the second choice brand simply by showing up. Um, but we set the test up with consumers' first and ch second choice brands side by side, you'll remember. And what we found was that even in pri private health insurance, by supercharging it with each of those behavioral principles, 85% of consumers chose that second choice brand. Well, okay, let me just make sure I got this right. So just the two side by side, we had a third defecting. And once you guys supercharge it up, 85% of Australians said, oh yeah, I'm going to go with that second choice brand just because of the principles. This is actually a similar defection rate to the one we saw in Tested and Moisturizer. And we've seen a similar thing happen across several categories from SUVs to booking international flights. All right. Now, I'm a little bit scared to ask here, but did you guys do the fake brand thing for health insurance as well? Uh, you know we did. Uh, so here is our fake brand for insurance, AOV Insurance. And I think it looks pretty convincing. Yeah. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I gotta say, if you're gonna make up an insurance company, three nondescript letters jammed together, it looks very official, it looks very healthy. Yes, it inspires confidence. So uh, <laughs> despite that, uh, it, it turns out the research agreed with you. So we saw 70% of consumers willing to abandon their preferred brand of healthcare provider for AOV insurance, which as we mentioned, completely made up. Wow. I mean, cause this is honestly, like this is quite incredible to think that people would trust something as important as their health to a brand that they have literally never heard of because it doesn't even exist just based on these behavioral principles. Yeah, and really interestingly, the effect on private health insurance was actually more powerful than it was on moisturizers. Yeah, and that was actually not super surprising when we looked at all of the studies we did both in Australia and globally, because we saw sometimes that if there was a more commoditized product, similar to health insurance, financial services, um, something that was hard for consumers to differentiate between, we did see that there was a higher defection rate to made up brands. All right, if I'm a challenger brand, this is all music to my ears. Yeah, um, but it's also important to know that this is really good for established brands as well. You can leverage these biases as well to make sure that your consumers are continuing to choose you. Awesome, so great for challenger brands and great for leading brands thinking like challenger brands. Whew. All right, guys, big episode. I know I learned a lot. Okay. That is all we have time for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Tell me when we meet again, episode four, our final four, right? <laughs> Can't believe it's over already. What What are we going to be covering in episode four of The Messy Middle? Yes, uh, hard to believe it's almost over, but you are not going to want to miss this last episode because this is where we're going to break down exactly what you as marketers can do to take action on these insights and help elevate your brand to be there for your consumers in the right way and at the right time all right so you do not want to miss episode four we will be posting it to the australia and new zealand think with google page at thinkwithgoogle.com slash a-u-n-z catch you next time thanks you guys soon. bye